Well, it's wonderful to be here, and um, we have just prayed, so we're going to dive right in. I love it when the Lord confirms something right away. Um, Mr. Tim talked about being anxious. So today I came to give a word of encouragement because all I could think about when the Lord kept speaking to me was that so many people are in that spot of being anxious. So I want to begin with what is trust? Firm belief and reliability, truth and ability or strength of someone or something, a relationship you have built on and the foundation is trust. I want to speak to you about write a book of remembrance, least you forget. The thing is, is that we all need to write down in our hearts, maybe on the, the tablets of our hearts, and maybe on paper, each of you know what it will take for you. But you need to write it down what God has done for you because as you revisit these issues as things happen to you again and again and again you will not go through the fear and the turmoil of life the way you went through it the first time because you will remember that God has a history and that in that history he met you there before Write down all that the Lord has done for you, all the times that he has awakened you and your loved ones, all the time he provided for you and your family, whether it be food, shelter, clothing, whatever it may be, write it down. Write down how many times he has healed you because when you come back to that issue again, you will know that God is a healer. Write down all of the times that he has taken you through tough times and through times of sorrow because you will remember the next time you go through that that God is with you it's important because we forget we find ourselves hurled in a corner with tears in our eyes and not that there's anything wrong with crying because we can cry because our Heavenly Father loves us so much that he collects our tears they mean something to him. That means that his son, his daughter, is calling out to him. I want you to know that you cannot write a book about something you know nothing about. Many people, there are people that say, I'm going to write a book about this person, or I'm going to write a book about that person. And if you've ever read one of those books, the book may be entitled, He Was Someone Great. And you're going, who was great? I'm not sure, but he was great. How was he great? I'm not sure, but he was great. So if you're going to write a book, you need to read the book. And you need to understand how much your Savior loves you. In, excuse me, in Deuteronomy 1.19, Moses is speaking with Israel as he prepares to send out scouts. And this is what it says. Then just as the Lord our God commanded us, we left Mount Sinai and traveled through the great and terrifying wilderness, as you yourself remember, and headed towards the hill of the Amorites. And when we arrived at Kardashiania, I said to you, you have now reached the hill of the Amorites that the Lord our God has given us. Look. He has placed the land in front of you. Go and occupy it as the Lord, as, as the Lord, the God of your ancestors has promised you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. How many of us has, have gone through times that we have gotten to a place and God said, this is the place I've brought you to. And when you get there, you're discouraged. When you get there, you're nervous. Should I go in or should I stay on the outside? God gives you many things and you're afraid to obtain it. You're afraid to go for it because you're saying to yourself, is this really mine? But he said, go in and not only go in, but occupy it. But all came to me and said, first, let us send out scouts to explore the land. They, have, they will advise us on the best route to take 
understand which town we should enter. This seemed like a good idea to me, so I chose 12 scouts, one from each of your tribes. They headed for the hill and country and came to the voice of Ashkol, known as the Cluster of Grapes, and explored it. They picked some of the fruit and brought it back to us, and they reported, the land the Lord our God has given us is indeed good land. Now think about this. They sent out scouts because the people say, okay, I know God's saying occupy it, so some of us have some things that God is saying occupy. I place you in this position. I have given you this anointing. I have told you to go forth, but now you're standing there and you're scared. And the Lord says, go ahead and claim it. I have done it. Go ahead and say I have done it. It's okay, but Lord, I don't want to say it. And, it. and this happens. Lord, I'm afraid. Lord, I'm timid. He said, occupy it. And then they said, how about one more thing? How about you send some people out to look at it? And when the 12 went out, they came back. And some back bought back huge fruit to show that the land is plenteous, the land is ripe, the land, that's the place you should be. Fear keeps us from occupying some places that God says that we should be. God opens up doors and you say, jobs, and you say, I am not the person that should take that job. I am not the person that should have that. I can't speak this way. I am not this person. I don't know how to do this. And God opens up the door, walk through it because God gave it to you. I am not the one that should, should say that this is not right. I'm not the one. Say it. Because God wants to use you. We are always waiting for ha something that has a title with it. I don't know, I feel like I should have a title to do this. No, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. And when the Lord says step, you step. Because God is not concerned with the titles. God's concerned with the heart. And he's opening the doors. Some of you have got some doors right now. And they're opening. And you're saying, Lord, should I walk in? Should I go in it, Lord? And the Lord is instructing you, move forward. So they sent them out. And then Israel began to think. Sometimes thinking is just a little too much. And in their thinking, but you rebelled, they, they, they couldn't go. They said, I, I'm afraid, I won't go. I don't know what's going to happen, and if we go, and then all of a sudden God is mad with us, what happens? I have friends over the years that God has sent them to the mission field and sent them other places, and they said, but I'm afraid to fly. And some of you have heard me say this. This is what I tell them. God doesn't have to get you in an airplane for you to die. So I proudly step on the plane and take my seat because I figure I'm driving every day and something could happen. So therefore, when God says go, I go because I don't figure I never leave a place going thinking this is the way I got to die. If God said go, go. Because what God told you to do, he'll bring you back. He will take care of you while you are there. And he's not slacking that. He's God. I was looking at a picture, and most of you know Brielle, and she sent a picture where she was in the Peace Corps, and um, there a baboon is looking in her window for a banana that is sitting on her window ledge. And so I looked at that picture. I said, now, Lord, that might tell me to go home. <laughs> you know, that baboon was looking in her window, and she took a picture of it. And I told her, I said, I don't know. The Lord is good. I said, because I always figure he didn't take me. He doesn't have to let me land on an airplane. He doesn't have to take me in the air. He doesn't have to take me any crazy way. But when I saw the baboon, I said, I'd pack it up and go home. <laughs> he could 
didn't have Ethiopia at any other place he wanted to land because at that point he would be in charge. And I thought about it and we've laughed and laughed and laughed about it and I've talked about how brave she was. Israel still could not see this. So it says in verse 26, but you rebelled against the Lord, the command of the Lord your God and refused to go in. They wouldn't go in. How many times has God done this and you refuse to go? You complained in your tents. Oh, there's that word, complaining. We complain about so many things. And even when God is trying to bless us, we're complaining. I don't want to do that. I, I was hoping he didn't ask me to do it that way. I don't like that. It's not what I want to do. They complained in their tents. The Lord must hate us. That's why he has bought us here from Egypt to hand us over to the Amorites to slaughter us. They thought that all of this was a work to be killed, that he would do all of this and bring them there to kill them. God has given each of you something that he wants you to do. And you know what? It's so easy to walk away from it or to give excuses. But I want to encourage you today. I came to give you a message of hope today. I came to tell you to get, a, get away from fear. I came to tell you to just throw it to the wind. And I came to encourage you to say yes to whatever God is asking you to do and to do it with all your might. I came to encourage you today. Because I want to tell you something. God is speaking to many of you about new projects, about new things that you are supposed to do. See a witness. And I'm going to tell you what happens. We sit on it and sit on it and sit on it. And we say, God, you can choose somebody else. There's someone greater. I'm telling you, he chose you. So you are the greater. Do what God is telling you to do. Instead of walking in extreme fear, he said, they said, where can we go? Our brothers have demoralized us with their report. They tell us the people of the land are taller and more powerful than we are. And their towns are large with walls rising high in the sky. We even saw giants there, the descendants of Anak. They were Constantly, they, they got the report back and some gave a report of giants. I want to tell you something. Everywhere you go, there's going to be two opinions. Everything you do, there's going to be two opinions. When I first went out into the ministry, I remember first going to the Air Force because I come from a pretty military family. Um, a lot of my family was military. And I remember the Air Force guy after interviewing me and after saying all of those things, the next day I came back, he said, can I say something to you? And I said, yes. He said, I'm not really sure you're Air Force material. I was like, what? He said, I'm not sure you're Air Force material. You don't look like you tough it out. He said, you, you look a little bit uh, too friendly, too nice, too, too everything. I just don't know that you can hang. So he said, why don't you go home, think about it, and come back. So I went home and told my family what he said. And then I said, well, I don't know. So I started praying, and inside, I was thinking about all the things that were said to me. But I have to tell you something, all along, since I was eight years old, God said he had called me into ministry. Since I was eight. And I want to tell you something. I was trying to head out in all of these crazy directions because I didn't want to do it. I thought there was an easier way for me. I thought there was a better way because I was saying, Lord, look at where I come from. Look at what I've been through. Look at all that has happened to me. God, you certainly didn't call me into ministry. You call people that are of 
great stature, that have money, that have things. They never had anything bad happen to them. Lord, you did not call me. That was what I felt inside. So I started trying other things. I said, okay, no Air Force, so now I'm going to go manage store. So I went to manage a store, and I had a really good run with it, and the Lord said, this is not what I called you to. And I said, well, Lord, okay. So I said, okay, I'll go to Bible college. So I went off to Bible college because I figured if I go to Bible college, at least I'm heading semi in the right direction. And then I get there, and within the first two weeks, the, the pastor, which was Pastor Kinsey, over the chapel, he comes to me and he goes, we're going to have you speak. I said, about what? <laughs> he said, we're going to have you preach. And I said, why me? There's a lot of Bible college students here. For real, get somebody else. I did not want to do it. I was there being incognito. I just wanted to study. At least I was heading in the right direction. So I get up to speak. And when I sit down, everybody goes, it was evident that God's hand is on your life. And I thought, oh, thank you. You had to do that too? You, you had to make it evident? I just wanted to be there. You know, I went because I was trying to be incognito. All I wanted was to go to Bible college. Now I got a call on my life. And I knew it in the beginning, but I thought I'd do something a little different. Because all along I kept thinking that this is for somebody else. This is what God has called somebody else to. I want to tell you something, that they went on and they rebelled and they took the wrong words and they would not do what God told them to do. And they would not occupy. There is going to be in each of us a day that we have to stand before God when, when he has asked us to do something and we would not occupy. I had that day, and the Lord said, this is the choices, Robin. I have called you, I have chosen you. Say yes, or you'll go down a path and later you'll regret it. So say yes. I'm reaching out to you. Say yes. I thought about verse 29, it says, but I say unto you, don't be shocked and afraid of them. The Lord your God is going ahead of you. The Lord makes the crooked path straight if you're willing. He will fight for you just as you saw him do in Egypt. And you saw him, you saw the Lord your God care for you all along the way. How many here have seen God care for them all along the way? How many here have seen God's provision all along the way? I can say that my God has been faithful even during the times that I didn't know how I was going to make it. God was faithful. He spread a table for me just to let me know he was able he was there he has walked with me talked with me he has carried me when I couldn't walk he's God all by himself he doesn't need anybody to help him be God he has been God and he has been faithful and he has let me know over and over again that I am there and he says I cared for you just like a father cares for his child, now he has brought you to this place. He's brought you here. What are you going to do with it? I was thinking about something that happened on Friday. We're, we're right at the school, and, and um, I'm standing outside talking to Sarah. And Lexi gets off the bus, and she runs and gives her mother a hug and a kiss. And... and she backs up to her. She just backs up to her with, a, with her book bag in her hand. And she backs up to her and she begins to fall back. She just falls back. I guess they had maybe done something in school that day. I'm not sure. But you know the test that they tell you to see if someone will catch you. And she just falls back. And her mother reaches out and catches her. 
and stands her back on her feet. And what does she do? She does it again. <laughs> and her mother catches her. And this is what she said. She said, I did it. I trusted. You know what? That's us. Notice she didn't back up to me. She doesn't know me that way. She does not know me that way. She backed up to the loving arms of her mother. Now I have to tell you something. My son is six feet tall almost. But if he were to drop backwards, I would try to catch him. Because there's one thing. I love my son and I don't want him to hit the ground. I would do whatever means I can to make sure that he does not get hurt by hitting the ground. That's what a mother does. That's what a father does. When you see your child, you help them. She fell back with, the, with complete trust. I'm watching her as we're talking, and there wasn't one part of her that thought, my mother isn't paying me any attention. I'm going to fall. She just fell back with ease. This is what God is asking you and I to do. To not stress, to not get filled with fear, but to just fall back. That's what he's asking our country to do, to just fall back on him, to seek him, because God was not surprised. God's got us. He knows what's going to happen. It's not about the person, it's about the God of our lives and what he's going to do. And we walk in fear and we tremble and we get scared. Because that's human nature, scared of the unknown, scared of what's going to happen, scared of how it's going to happen. What, what are we going to do now? Just fall back. Just fall into your heavenly father's arms because he has you. Deuteronomy 1 and 32 and 33 says this, but even after all he did, Everything he did, you refuse to trust the Lord your God who goes before you looking for the best place to camp, guiding you with a pillar of fire by night and a pillar of cloud by day. He's always there. Everywhere you go, I can't tell you complicated stuff, but what I can tell you is how every day I wake up and when I look at my life and what happens in my life and I look at how God has taken care of me and my son, some things don't add up. But I know that in the morning when I'm on my knees and I'm saying, God, I surrender myself to you. I surrender my life to you. I surrender, God, and I'm asking you to go before my son and I. I'm asking you to make the crooked path straight. I'm asking you to be with us. I'm asking you, Lord, to direct our path. I'm asking you, God, to be in us every day, every second of the hour. Use us for your benefit. I want to tell you something. I look back from where I came from, and today I'm a different person. And it's because God has been with me. He's God, and he has been with me. Whatever you are fearing, whatever situation has been exaggerated, because we got some situations that we have exaggerated, they seem bigger than they really are. I want to tell you something, God can bring you through anything. Sometimes we are in the midst of that tear time. For the Bible says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Some of you are in some nights. But I want to encourage you, there's always a morning. Every time I lay down, I have to wake up. How many of you have the same problem? You lay down and all of a sudden you have to wake up. Same thing. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. God puts families back together. 
God is the one that heals. God is the one that gives you a future when you have no idea where your future is. God is the one that makes sure that your table is full. God is the one that takes you back and forth to work over all of the crazy things that happen. God is the one that's there for you. Some of us forget about that, but God is always there. Trust him. Fall backwards into his arms. Israel had lots of promises. Deuteronomy 31 and 8 said, And the Lord, and the Lord he, it is he that doth, doth go before up thee, and he, he will be with thee. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Um, fear not, neither be dismayed. Deuteronomy 31 and 6. Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor uh, for, fear not, not, excuse me, fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he is, and it is he that doth go with thee, and he will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Um, Hebrews 13 and 5. Let your communication be without covetous and and be content with such things as you have. For he hath said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Joshua 1 and 9. Have not, have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee wherever you go. 1 Peter 5 and 7, cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Today, you need to write a book. You need to write a book because God has brought each of us collectively through some things. And if you were to write a book, Matthew 28, 20 says, teach them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. God is always with you. Sometimes there are situations that you feel like you're all alone. I can't tell anybody. I've been there where I felt I couldn't tell anybody. It was too embarrassing or it hurt too badly. And I said, God, I don't want to tell anybody. God was there. He was with me. He was holding me. In the last several months, people have come to me and said, I want to talk to you about something that I cannot tell anybody else. And I've been able to encourage them that there is no place in life that we go that God is not there. God knows. You don't have to be afraid because God is there. Hebrews 13 and 6, so that we may boldly say the Lord is my helper and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Open your eyes. I told my son, my son was going through not wanting to, earlier in life, he did not want to speak out loud. He, he would say, you know, mom, I, I, I'll let you do that. I'll let others do that. I don't want to say anything. I don't want to be heard. He did not want to speak. And I told him, I said, you know what, son? God has put something good inside of you. And one day, you will just blurt it out. Because you'll know that the same God that's with me is with you. And now we go places. And before I can even say anything, he'll say, you know, God will help you. God will be with you. God will strengthen you. I read things that he writes to people. And he says, Mama, I'm counseling with people. And I said, this is a good thing. Because years ago, he didn't want to say anything. But he counsels with his friends. And he tells his friends what the Lord is saying. This comes from a strength that finally he realizes God is with him. And we don't have to fear man. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. And the peace of God, 
which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Ever been there where the peace of God keeps you? I have been through times in my life where I know that if the peace of God wasn't there, I would have been put away. But the peace of God came in. And that's what sustained me. Isaiah 41 and 10, fear thou not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yea, I will help you, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Some things that are important today, some things and some reasons and some things I want you to remember. Number one, you can't write a book about someone that you don't know anything about. So you have to draw in. I want to tell you, it's going to take some work. You know, it's, 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 it's interesting to me that most people try to get to work on time. They try to get many places on time. But when the Lord starts beckoning you, we get slow. And we say, I'll be there tomorrow. Can I get there five hours from now? But I want to tell you something. You're going to have to press in. Get in the press and begin to visit with, your, with the Lord. Get in the press for prayer time. Get in the press for reading. Get in the press for spending time with God. Set a calendar. It's not going to happen if you don't plan it. It's got to become a plan and then it'll become Holy Spirit driven. I set aside a time, but then it became Holy Spirit driven because once you set aside the time and you make God a priority, he will woo you, he will draw you, and you want to come. I was thinking about something Molly said um, when she was talking about she went into her prayer room to get something, and she said she was like, I'll be back, you know, and I will, I'll be back, I'll see you in a little bit, because you do feel that way. You feel like if you want run in there for a minute, you're like, I got to be, I will come back because I know that you are calling me. You can't write a book about someone you don't know. Our father is the same, always, and he wants to be there for all of us in life situations, in our decisions, and the toughest of times. But you got to ask him in. I want to tell you something in every tough season, and this is a tough season for me right now. I have gone to New York and found out my mom is not doing well and, and probably will not be doing well for quite forever. And in trying to help and do all the things that I was trying to do, and I get back home, and on Monday, I, was supposed, I said I'd be back at work, and I took Monday to cry. And I just laid in the bed, and I cried. And I said, okay, Father, here's my mom. I surrender her to you. Because this is a season that I have not walked through. When I walked through it many years ago, it was a surprise because my father died unexpectedly. And so I was 60 miles away from him because my sister called and said, you need to come home and you need to come home right away. Dad's in the hospital, it doesn't look good. We got on the road and we were 60 miles out and my father passed away. And so now I am here and I see and I'm, I'm walking through this. So I said, okay, God, not going to work every day crying, not going to fall apart every single solitary day. So I'm going to spend today at home and I'm going to cry. And then whenever the crying part of this season right now, just right now is over, I'm going to get up. And I'm going to look and find what you want me to have my eyes on so I can make it through this season of life. Because there is a season. So I spent the day crying and when I finally got through, I said, okay, now it's time to be on my knees. I went before the Lord and the Lord gave me scripture promises to hold on to. And I have moved into a new place 
And now when my mom calls, I can encourage her. I can speak to her. We were talking the other day and laughing. And it was a season of me just being able to know that God has my mother in the palm of his hand. And he has not let go and he will not let go. And even until the end, he will be with her. He will hold her. He will love her. When I am not there, he is always there. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all of thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. This is where the book of remembrance comes in. You will forget. You will have times that you have forgotten some things. And so you need to go back and reread how God brought you through, how he carried you, how he loved you, how he was there for you. Psalms 13, 5 says, but I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. This is my verse. This is my verse. This is what's going to carry me through. I write down what I remember, and I don't want to forget how God has been faithful to me. But this is what God gave me. Psalms 20 and 7. Some trust in chariots. Some in horses. But I will remember the name of the Lord our God. Because God is with me. God is with you. And whatever you're going to go through, God is with you. And I want to encourage you, write it down. You've gone through some things in your life that you said, I don't know how God's going to work this. 17 years of wanting a child, 17. And I remember everybody around me, I celebrated. They, they came in, I went to every shower in our church. I attended everything they had for babies. And I bought gift after gift after gift. And we came back to Maryland and we were new youth pastors at the um, National Church of God. And Pastor Laurie called and said, he didn't know that much about us at that time. He said, I don't know why you do not have a child. But there is a home in Princeton Pike, in Princeton Pike, New Jersey. And he said, if you can get there, they have a young lady that when she has her baby, she is going to adopt that baby out. So that night, we left going to Princeton Pike. I'm sorry, Ohio, not New Jersey, Ohio. We left. Here we were in Ruth there, and God started speaking to me, and God said, I'm giving you this child. Now, I want you to know, we had done this before. We had had other children that we thought we were going to be able to adopt, and it fell through. We had three boys we were going to adopt, and then... At the very last minute, a, par a parent came out of nowhere, and the adoption was almost over, and so we, the, the children were gone. So I left saying, as I was leaving, I was saying, Lord, I don't want this to happen. Please let this be it. And we walked in, and she had people she was going to see. But when I walked in the door, this is what she said, that's my baby's mother. That was what she said. And I came in, I gave her a hug, I followed her through the next couple of months, and God gave us our son. And out of 17 years, I had the greatest time of my life, I got to be a mother. He's faithful. And you know the book, I love you forever, I love you for always. You know, we all see the end of that book. We say she's a little creepy <laughs> because she goes over to his house and picks him up. I won't do that, I promise. But I do want to tell you this. 
every night when my son settles, I look in the door and he's as much a gift every night as he was the first day I brought him home. Write it down. You won't remember some things, but you are not in a strange place. You have been there before. You have gone through it and God supplied. He met all your needs according to his riches and glory. And he was there and he will never, ever, ever leave you. Write it down. Well, well. <laughs> Sounds like you got some writing to do. I'm sorry, yes. <laughs> and this is a great time to remind you that on December 11th, we're going to be sharing testimonies. Pastor Robin did a wonderful job this morning of just sharing to you. Look, just give her another hand. It is incredibly important for you to write down and record what God has done in your life because you will need to look back that, at that over time. And it's also helpful to have articulated it so that you can share that with others. When we share our testimonies, it encourages others to follow in the same way that God has done for us. And it also releases the grace for those things to take place in our lives. So, December 11th, we're having a testimony morning. And I would sure love for you to send me some testimonies. <laughs> so write down what God has done for you and send me an email. My address is j.patterson at ourfathershouseag.org. And I want to compile these testimonies together and have you come up here and share what God's done this year in your life that you know only he could have done it. Because it's going to encourage others to, to pursue the Lord and hope that he's going to do things and have faith that he's going to do what is beyond what they can expect at this point in time. So, with that, we're going to head out of here, but not before we pray. Father, we just thank you so much for all that you have done in our lives. And Lord, I thank you for the message you brought forward this morning, reminding us that we need to focus on you, Lord, and not fear. Because you have gone before us, you've hedged us in before and behind, and Lord, you're with us always, 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 always. Even when we take a misstep, you're there to catch us, Lord. And you're hit there to pull us up and we fall down, dust us off, and walk with us forward again. We just thank you, Father, for your grace and your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, you are released. We are going to be having that dessert auction here right after that. So uh, if you could bring your conversations out to the, the foyer there. I'm going to be out in the front room. If, it's your, if you're a first-time guest, I'd love to meet with you out there. Um, and we'll see you next Sunday.